Hey, what's up guys and girls? My name is Gary Blackwood, also known as Gazabee123, and welcome to this week's edition of the vlog. We're going to continue with our Texas leg of the trip, and I just want to say one thing in the intro. For those that follow me on Instagram will know that I played on three streams in Texas, and I'm only going to make two vlogs, and the reason for that isn't because I lost a lot of money on the third stream. Results are on screen right now, it's just because there wasn't enough content in that episode for me to make a vlog out of it. It was basically me calling a 3-bet, check folding, calling a 3-bet, check folding, and it just didn't make for very entertaining content. So I don't want you guys to think I'm hiding results, I lost a fuckload on stream in the third session in Texas, but I just couldn't make a vlog out of it. On to today's session, we're playing 2550, sometimes 2550, 100. Very reggae lineup, they promised me whales galore, I came all the way to Texas and I'm battling out with these fucking super pros. In all seriousness, it was a lot of fun, really tough session, uh, in terms of the other players at the table being very good. But it was a really awesome session, let's check out some hands. Onto our first hand of the day and the $100 straddle is randomly on in this hand. Ryan has opened NMP to $325 with Ace-Queen offsuit. And I looked down at King Jack suited in the small blind. I re-raised to $1,200 and Ryan makes the call. Onto our first flop of the day, it's 10-9-4 with one club. Pretty reasonable, I've got a gut shot, two overs and a backdoor flush draw. I decide to bet half pot on this texture, not really wanting any resistance on this board and thankfully Ryan doesn't get too out of line here, he just lets it go and we're dragging in our first pot of the day. It's still early in the day, I'm kind of feeling out everyone at the table. Next up I look down at King Queen offsuit in the hijack, definitely a playable hand, I raise it on up to $150. Boots calls in the cutoff with a mystery hand. He's a complete unknown player. I've never played with him before today. And Ryan comes along from the big blind as well, deciding he was getting too good a price with his 10-4 offsuit. We're off to a flop three ways. It's ace, jack, seven. We've got the nut, no pair here. Ryan checks, I check, and Boots checks it back. To a turn, it's another ace. And when Ryan checks and I check it on over to Boots, he takes a stab here for $150. It's a pretty small bet, we can be ahead a decent amount here and if he just has a jack we've got some over cards to go with our gut shot so I decide to make the call. Heads up to the river now, it's another 7 and Boots bets again here for $350 into a pot of $775. Just under half pot, I really wasn't sure what to make of the size but decided to be a bit of a hero here and make the call. My thought process here was that I didn't think he'd check the flop and then bet this size on the turn and then this size on the river with an ace and it's kind of unlikely he's value betting a jack here but on the other hand we do block hands like king 10 and queen 10 he can still be bluffing with. I decide to make the call and he turns over pocket kings. Completely owned on the river there, note to self, they've just always got it, don't make hero calls with king high. We won't have to wait too long to get our revenge though, just a couple of hands later Ryan H has opened under the gun, I'm in the low jack and peel with ace jack off suit, and boots calls behind with ace 7 suited. And we go 3 ways to the flop, it's ace 9 4 with 2 diamonds, always happy to be flopping top pair here, and we have the jack of diamonds working for us if we need it. Ryan takes a stab here with his pocket fives, I call and Boots calls as well. Three ways to the turn now, it's the seven of spades, Boots has spiked his three outer to take the lead. It checks to him and he bets $500, Ryan of course folds and I make the call with the intention of proceeding very cautiously on the river. The river is another nine, we've counterfeited his two pair and it goes check check. Really nice pick up for us here, winning a pot worth over $2,000 with that nine on the river. It's been a pretty good day so far, I'm winning a bunch of small pots uncontested, just like in this hand where there's been an open, a call and I squeeze pocket queens preflop from the small blind to 1350 and take it down. Our next hand of note comes a couple of orbits later when I open 10-9 offsuit in the cutoff. This is slightly too loose here but the button and the big blind have both been playing really quite tight today, so I want to just slightly widen my cutoff opening range to try and take advantage of that. Ben decides to call out the big blind and we go heads up to the flop, queen, queen 5 with 2 hearts. Ben checks and I think I'm just betting everything for one third pot here which is what I do. He makes the call and we go to a turn, the 5 of diamonds, double pair board now, he checks again and I'm just going to come right out here and say this, I think our exact combo is such a good combo to blast off with here. We block queen 10, we block queen 9, we unblock hearts and we block 10s and 9s which are Ben's best pocket pairs so I bet $725 on the turn. He's not going anywhere just yet, he makes the call and when the jack rolls off on the river I follow through with my plan and bet $1800. This is the exact size and the exact line I would take if I had a queen here. It does get through, Ben folds his sevens, it's a pretty sexy triple from us with a really really nice combo to do it with. 
On to our first stand-up hand of the day. Mr. Bond has opened in the hijack with King-5 suited. I call out the small blind with Ace-10, and Pierre calls in the $100 straddle with Ace-7 suited. Three medium strength hands going to the flop now. It's King-8-4 with two clubs. Top pair for Bond, nut flush draw for Pierre, and fuck all for me. So naturally when the flop goes check, 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 I start firing out on the turn. I bet $500 with my gut shot. Both players make the call and we're three ways to the river, it is the brick of all bricks and offsuit three. Both flush draws miss and I have ace high, so I take a stab here betting $1400, which is way too small. This is for sure a miscalculation of the size of the pot in my head. I was trying to bet 75% pot, but sometimes maths is just really, really hard for me. Pierre gets out of the way and it's back on Bond who takes a good amount of time before calling. If I was in his shoes, I would have absolutely snapped with top pair and the two flush draws missing, but he is of course entitled to take his time. 5.1k pot going his way after a really nice check back on the flop from him. It's down to just Pierre and myself now as the last two standing and things are extra tense because I have been bragging to the table all day about how I've never lost a stand-up game in my life. My reputation is on the line here as well as my $200 per player at the table, so I gotta find a way to win and keep the streak going. I decide to fire on the $100 straddle so that instead of being under the gun, I'll be the last player to act and get to play a much wider range of hands instead. Boots is now the under the gun player and he raises it on up to $250. Pierre makes a pretty tight fold for him with ace-5, I'm surprised he didn't end up 6-bet shoving it in this hand. But anyways, it falls round to me and I have a pretty reasonable hand that the graphics didn't pick up, king deuce of spades. I make the call, we're heads up to the flop, it's queen 8-4 with two spades. Great flop for me, I've got a flush draw and an overcard as well. Boots c-bets the flop for $300 and he's been playing really tight today, so given he's under the gun and he c-bet this flop, I decide to proceed with caution and just call here, not wanting to bloat the pot too much. Six of clubs on the turn, I of course check and Boots checks back on this turn. I am quite literally blasting every river in the deck, a spade would be really nice but it doesn't matter, I am ready to blast on the river. Queen of hearts, I stick with my plan, I bet $800, snap fold from boots, let the gloating begin. Did See, you know that and, I have never lost the stand up game before? And Pierre <laughs> is going to have to pay uh, everyone. Just king high, Rick. Right? Just king high. <laughs> 200 for you, 200 for you, and you, and you. Next up, Ryan has opened in early position to $150 with a suited king. I am in the cutoff with ace-jack offsuit, and as Uncle Doug would say, all three options are on the table here. I decide to re-raise this time to $500. Ryan makes a call and we're heads up to the flop. It's 987 rainbow. Very middling, very connected. I don't think we want to do too much c-betting here on this board, so I decide to knuckle back and take a free card. So the turn is the ace of diamonds, Ryan checks again and I decide to check again as well. Ryan as we know can be super loose and is more than good enough to check again on the turn here with his sets, his straights, his two pairs and I really don't want to get check raised on this board with just top pair so I decide to pop control and check back. To a river it is the brick of all bricks, the deuce of diamonds, Ryan checks a third time and he is still capable of having some super strong hands here at some frequency. But I think we still have to try and get some value. I bet $750 and he lets it go. It's a pretty cool hand all in all. He actually said afterwards that if I had bet the turn, he was going to check raise and blast the river. So I might have had to have folded on the river. So I'm kind of glad I played the hand the way I did. Up next is a very fun hand with lots of different ways for all the players at the table to play it. So I pick up pocket queens and open in the low jack. Boots calls in the high jack, he's got ace king suited. And Ryan puts in the squeeze to $725 with ace four suited. I don't mess around here, I put in the four bet to $1750. It's back on boots and he goes deep into the tank. At the time I was thinking why the heck is this guy tanking so long here? But obviously we see now that he actually had a really big hand preflop. He does eventually decide to lay it down, a little surprised to see that and when it gets back to Ryan he decides to make the call and we're going to see 3. Almost 4,000 in the middle preflop and I'm praying for no overcards and I don't really want to see a jack or a 10 too often either, just basically keep it really really low dealer. 10, 7 deuce rainbow, kind of safe as can be, he's got top set, he's got top set. I decide that I'm going to make this a two street hand here, I bet $1800 ready to just rip it in on any turn card. As we can see though, it's a complete swing and a miss for Ryan and he's forced to just fold. Another one of those hands where it could have been played so differently if just one action had changed preflop. 
Stand Up Game is back on now and I once again keep my streak alive. Boots has decided to fire the $200 straddle on in this hand out of nowhere. Bond has gotten way out of line here and raised 8 do suited on the button to $500. I look down at ace 4 suited in the small blind and make it $2,000 to go. It folds back around to Bond who of course folds but I gotta tell you it's a little sweaty 3 betting to $2,000. I love playing these stakes so unfortunately they don't run this side of the pond so I gotta just make the most of them when I can when I'm in America. Next up, Ryan H has raised to $200 in the hijack with 10-4 offsuit. This is the beauty of the stand-up game. People just want to sit down and they'll do anything they can to try and make that happen. I'm on the button and I want to re-raise these pocket jacks very often, but I decide to just flap this time and see what develops. Boots calls in the small man with King Jack and Pierre has a very pretty 10-9 of clubs and he decides to put in the squeeze here to $1,150. It falls back round to me, only I make the call and we go heads up to Queen, 5, Deuce, Club, Club, Club. It's just never Jack 9-9, nine, nine, is it? Pierre bets $750, really nice size from him and I'm of course not going anywhere just yet. I make the call. To a turn now with over $4,000 in the middle. It's the King of Spades, I thought it was a club for a second but unfortunately not. Two over cards now and just the Jack High flush draw, so when Pierre bets again for $1,700, again a really good size by him, I think for a minute and decide to just let this one go. I've got so many better hands to continue with here, so I decide to muck and let Pierre drag in this one. Very interesting hand coming up now, so the stand-up game is still on and lots of people have lots of different ways of approaching their strategy for the stand-up game. Ryan H for example does some limping under the gun, and in this hand he's done just that with Queen-3 offsuit. I make it 200 to go in MP with Ace-Jack, Ryan calls in the small blind with King-10, and Ryan H calls as well. Three ways to this flop, it is Ace-King-King. Both players can of course have a king in their hand but they have a ton of ace x hands as well that we are way ahead of so I bet $225 just to see where I'm at. Ryan calls with his trip kings and we go heads up to the turn, it is the six of diamonds and then Ryan does something that I wasn't expecting, he leads out for $475. I'm not going anywhere just yet, I make the call off to the river with 2k in the middle, it's the seven of diamonds, the backdoor flush comes in but I do have the jack of diamonds which is nice and when Ryan bets he only bets half pot. It feels like maybe he can be value betting worse or this could just be a complete random bluff so I don't think for too long before making the call. He shows me the bad news unfortunately and he drags in this pot worth over $4,000. It's coming towards the end of the stream, it's been a really fun day so far with a great group of guys. Bond is on the button here with a pair of 10s, he makes it $300 to go and I make it $1300 in the small blind with 8-7 suited. Bond makes the call and we see a flop of Jack, 7 deuce with 2 clubs and 1 heart. It's a pretty disconnected flop and I decide to bet here for 1 third pot. Bond makes the call, to the turn now it is the king of hearts, I've turned a flush draw to go with my pair and I decide to start checking. Bond checks back and we see the three of clubs roll off on the river. Not a great run out for our hand and we were already behind to some hands on the flop, but I think our hand is a little too strong to bluff here so I decide to check. Bond of course checks it back and we see the bad news he's dragging in this one. Another quick one here as we 3 bet these lovely pocket kings, once again versus Bond's button open. Jack 10 9 flush draw, a very wet flop but I decide to see bet here and I take it down. This hand has me hovering right about even as we play our last hand of the stream. The straddle has been on and off all day but it's back on now and Ryan H makes it 250 to go in early position with pocket 7s. I make the call with pocket 6s in the hijack, Ryan calls out the big mine with 8-7 off and Bond is getting a great price with his 4-3 suited so he makes the call as well. 4 ways to the flop now, it is king 6 deuce with 2 clubs, oh baby, middle set, 4 ways on a board with lots of draws on it, here we fucking go. It folds to me and I bet half pot, I don't really do much bigger betting in multi-way pots so this is the size that I choose. Bond makes the call and we're heads up to the turn, it is the jack of hearts. I bet again, this time sizing up to $1,500, just praying for my opponent to have something that he can continue with, but unfortunately for us, he is four high and has to just let it go. With those last two pots, I end up in Profitville for the day, booking a small but pleasing win of $1,725 in what can only be described as a very, very tough game for a Texas livestream. 
that's all from me for this week guys I really hope you enjoyed the show lots of fun on this session but like I say really reggae really tough lineups not really what I was hoping for when coming to Texas but still I had a great time uh, thank you very much for watching please do click that sub button hoping to do a really nice giveaway uh, in next week's vlog so go ahead and click that sub button so you're ready for it until next time take it easy